Hi guys, this is Jimmy from KS Group and in this video I'm going to show you some of the new features that we added to V-Ray with the latest service pack. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the improvements that we added to the V-Ray RT. As you know, V-Ray RT is our interactive rendering engine, uh, which we can use uh, mainly in the shading and lighting stages of a production. And V-Ray RT is a progressive path tracer, uh, which means that it starts at lower quality and improves the quality uh, constantly, the quality of the rendered image. And it works really great, um, like any progressive path tracer, it uh, works really great in an exterior scenes, but in an interior scene, uh, there may be some difficulties. And as you can see, I have uh, an interior scene over here. Uh, also, uh, if you check the settings, I'll be using V-Ray RT running on GPUs. So the GPUs obviously will be faster than the CPU and I want to, do to use that. So I'm going to click Active Shade and uh, you'll see that it will be pretty fast actually. Uh, but um, sometimes we want to be even faster, we want to work uh, with an even higher speed. And what we can do to do this is uh, use one of the new features, which actually allows us to render just a small region of a scene. So let's say I'm working just on the shading of this chair. I can draw a region and now V-Ray RT uh, will be only rendering uh, this small part of the image. So it won't waste any render power over those areas over here. And as you can see, we re get a really nice image uh, very, very quickly. Now, uh, this works with the RT running on GPUs and on CPUs. So you don't have to, if you don't have a nice GPU, you can use it uh, with the CPU as well. And it will, again, speed up the rendering. Another cool thing that you can do here is actually uh, you can go and select this real zoom option which will allow me to zoom in inside of this uh, active shade window. So let's say I'm working on the shading of this small cup here. I can just zoom on it and you'll see that we're rendering it pretty quickly and I can set up the shading much faster than if I had to render the whole scene. Now uh, the main advantage here is that I didn't ch change my view. So um, if I just double click I will set my view here and uh, I'll be able to continue working on the entire uh, scene. So this is a pretty simple addition, but uh, as you can see, uh, it can speed up things uh, quite a bit. Now for the next thing, I'm going to open another scene. And again, it's going to concern V-Ray RT and mainly the part of it which runs on graphics cards. So uh, as you can see, I have a pretty simple scene. Uh, let's hit render. And maybe you'll recognize why it's actually not that simple for V-Ray uh, when running on graphics cards. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we're rendering pretty quickly. And the thing about this uh, scene is uh, the layered shader that we have on this car. So if I select the car and uh, bring out the slate editor, we'll be able to see that this material here is actually a blend material. And uh, the thing about um, rendering on graphics cards is that uh, there are a lot of limitations due to the hardware, due to the OpenCL, for example. And in the past, we were not able to uh, create, to render blend materials or any kind of layered materials with V-Ray RT when running on GPUs. You could still do, do it with the CPU build with when V-Ray is running on CPUs, uh, but with the GPU, it was not possible. And let me just show you that this is actually running on GPU. So this is the RT settings and you see that the engine time is type is set to open CL. So uh, with this service pack, we actually were able uh, to get V-Ray RT on GPU to render blend materials. And another limitation that we had is that we were not able to render um, some of the procedural textures, most of the procedural textures, and we all were also able to fix that as well. So right now, uh, if we take a look at the shader, for example, I can select the base material and uh, play with the colors just a little bit. And you'll be able to see that uh, even though this is a little bit complex material uh, where we have two materials blended on top of each other. V-Ray is still able to do that and to render that pretty quickly. And let's play a little bit with this uh, flow of texture that we're using for the blend amount. So for example, I'm going to change the index of refraction. Uh, now this is quite an improvement because in the past we were not able to uh, create really, really complex materials. And uh, in some sense, we really need to do that. So now uh, the shading is basically complete and we can do whatever we want with V-Ray RT1 running on GPUs as well. Uh, another thing, if you check the material for this part of the car here where the lights are, you see that right now we're actually blending a V-Ray light material uh, with the standard material. So uh, again, something that is not very simple, but uh, V-Ray RT is able to do this pretty quickly. Now, uh, this is quite an improvement actually, and I just want to show you one scene where we have uh, a more complex um, shader. 
something sort of a production ready scene. So in this scene I have uh, this vase and uh, if I bring out the settings of V-Ray RT you'll see that once again we're using OpenCL so we're using V-Ray RT running on GPUs and let's hit the active shade and we'll be able to see uh, the result in a couple of seconds. Right now we have a bunch of textures that we need to add um, to load into the GPU memory so that's why it's taking a couple of seconds before it starts rendering. Okay, so this is my uh, object here and as you can see the materials are much more complex than before so let's uh, let's draw a region here and uh, use the real zoom option and you'll be able to see that uh, those materials are pretty pretty complex for example if we check the material for this ceramic part uh, let's bring it up here you see that once again we have a blend material and we have one material for the ceramic part and another material uh, which is used for these golden areas here and we're actually uh, blending them with this bitmap which actually shows us where we want one of the materials to be visible and where we want the other one and over here we have some uh, more textures another uh, interesting part maybe here the, the wood material as you s can see again uh, we have some textures for the diffuse and we also have um, uh, map the reflections but I need a better point of view so let's refresh this and uh, you'll be able to see that as well so again complex materials but Vira is able to render them very very uh, quickly and easily and another improvement that we added to the RT is that uh, this active shade window now is kept in uh, floating 32-bit floating point uh, format so I can save open XRs directly from here or HDR images it doesn't matter I can save them directly from the active shade when rendered with V-Ray. Okay, so these were the improvements uh, on V-Ray RT and they mainly uh, affect the part of RT which is running on GPUs because those features that were not supported on the GPU previously are not were supported on CPU, so we didn't have to do any work there. Now another small thing that I want to show you is in this scene. As you can see we have this uh, simple van and uh, let's take a look at the material. I need to pick it. Uh, the material is pretty simple, we have just uh, one V-Ray material and the thing about this, the special thing is that we have this um, V-Ray P-Tex node that is uh, connected to the diffuse. And the P-Tex is a certain type of textures which actually allows us to uh, use textures without having to uh, unwrap our object. So let's see how we did this. Uh, what we did is uh, we actually uh, moved the geometry into Mudbox and I'm not going to open the Mudbox, that's why I have some uh, screenshots here. The geometry was placed in Mudbox and uh, we use this P-Tex setup which allows us to prepare uh, the geometry for creation of P-Textures. And then uh, we can draw uh, the texture directly on our geometry. So this is the final uh, image. We can then export this P-Texture and the texture keeps information about which part of the image is uh, placed on which uh, face in the, in the geometry. So this P-Texture will work only for this geometry but it's uh, still pretty useful because we can actually use this in V-Ray and render it without having to unwrap anything. And let's face it, nobody likes uh, unwra UV unwrapping because it's a little bit boring, to say at least. And using this uh, P-Tex node, you'll be able now to um, render those P-Textures inside of 3ds Max or Maya using V-Ray. I'm not going to wait for this to finish, I just want to show you something else which is uh, pretty straightforward but it can be very useful at some point. So as you can see uh, in this uh, same scene I have uh, the V-Ray Sun and Sky System and most of you know what it is, it's just a procedural, uh, it's a direct light and then we have this procedural texture called the sky which is put in the environment. And uh, the colors of the sky and the sun, they depend on the position of the sun in the, in the sky so it's a very useful thing for illuminating daylight setups and if you wanted to create some um, more artistic view for the sky we could do this by uh, do this by for example putting the V-Ray sky in an output node and applying some color corrections to it but we couldn't do this uh, with the sun so if I had if I render now you'll see that uh, the color of the light coming from the sun is pretty uh, boring it's just a very bright color very yellowish, sort of yellowish color. 
Now, uh, what we added in this service pack is uh, a little option here in the sky settings, and it's called filter cover. So it basically allows us to tint uh, the color of the sun and uh, create more artistic results. Uh, I'm going to want to use this, for example, if I want to keep the uh, physical correctness of the brightness of the, s uh, of the sun, but I just want to uh, add a, d a little bit different feeling uh, in terms of colors uh, and the whole illumination. So it's a simple thing, but it's uh, very, very uh, useful. Let's try it again with a different color, and it should get more uh, bluish. As you can see, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Now, um, there are a lot more things that we added uh, in V-Ray, uh, in the latest service pack, service pack to a V-Ray 2.0. Uh, for example, we created a new uh, hair shader, and uh, it's called V-Ray Hair Material. Uh, you can uh, find it here in the materials, here it is. And it's actually, I created a whole other video for it where I'm going into some detail about all the settings, and you'll see that we are actually able to render or Natrix hair and 3ds Max uh, default hair, so uh, it will be very useful for those of you who need to create some furry characters. Additionally, uh, there are some improvements that went on that are not so visible. For example, uh, we added some improvements to the rendering of dynamic geometry, which is, for example, displacement and uh, proxies and so on. We also added some improvements uh, in the distributed rendering. Uh, the GI methods, uh, indirect, uh, the methods for indirect elimination, uh, the light cache and the um, irradiance map were also improved, uh, which will allow you to create to reduce the flickering in animations. Uh, we also added some improvements to the subsurface material, for example, which allows us you to bake uh, the illumination for the certain material, and uh, we also have some improvements to the uh, V-Ray HDRI uh, node and the uh, V-Ray multi sub texture. Um, this pretty much uh, concludes this uh, video. I'm Dimitar Christoph Jimmy, and I thank you for watching.